Thanks for coming out. Uh, my name is Scott Stahl, software developer at OnShift in Cleveland. That's my Twitter, website, email address. Feel free to get in touch with me. Ask any questions you want. Cool. So I'm here to talk about my, uh, my career transition. I used to work in the lumber industry. Uh, that was a year and a half ago. Now I work writing Python. How did that happen, you might ask? So uh, I'm going to step back a little bit. Um, when I was a kid, I'm sure like most of you, uh, I loved computers, loved playing video games, uh, and I loved writing code. I wrote my first block of code when I was in sixth grade. So I had, you know, when I was young, I kind of had a connection with um, thinking that way, you know, a, a mindset that matched up with that way. Uh, I, I took computer science classes in high school. I uh, had two or three semesters of it. So I had a little bit of an inkling that I wanted to do this. Um, was started, started thinking about, you know, I think I might go into you know, being a software developer for a career. And then I went to college for wood products engineering. <laughs> so uh, to explain how that happened, uh, we had a family business in my family that was a Rochester Lumber Company. And it was my dad worked there, his dad worked there, his dad before him started it. So it was kind of expected that I would go into it as well. And so I did. And uh, I worked in lumber and building materials for eight years after graduating uh, with my degree. I uh, was an estimator, um, I was a manager, I did all sorts of things um, related to the lumber world, which was very interesting and fun. Uh, I, I still found ways, though, uh, while I was there to continue working with computers. We had a, an inventory system that we had an inventory system that we had an old one that we had to transition over to a new one. So I was like, oh, that sounds like a fun project. I'll take that on. You know, we had any time, again, I'm sure like most of you, if you're working in non-software companies, anytime some computer issue came up, they said, hey, you're the young guy who seems to like computers. Why don't you help out? So I kept finding ways to get involved with that. But at the same time, I, can, I learned a lot about the sales side of the business. I learned a lot about management. I learned a lot about business in general. So that eight years that I spent uh, was, was time where I was not developing uh, software skills, but I was developing business skills. So it ended up being useful. Now a couple pictures. Lumber. <laughs> Doors. <laughs> and here's me happily managing my coworkers. Uh, it's a caricature drawn by one of them of me. And there was me trying to live it out. So despite all the flannel I got to wear, I wasn't happy. So I had, I had thought for years about wanting to switch careers, wanting to work as a software developer. Um, but returning to college felt like a huge investment of time and money that I couldn't afford. Uh, it was hard to think about stepping back from earning a paycheck to having debt again. <laughs> to going back and spending, you know, I didn't know what was involved in it. Um, so is it two years? Is it four years? Uh, it felt scary, so I knew I wanted to make a change, but didn't know how to get there. So after some research, I decided to go to a software boot camp, which I'm sure many of you, how many here have heard of software boot camps? Yeah, cool. All right, so um, what is it? A lot of people ask, because this is something that's really just come up in the past several years. Uh, the goal of a software boot camp is to take someone from being a complete novice to having enough skills to get a job. So there were a lot of people there who had, you know, I took two semesters of high school computer science. There were some people who came in with none. Um, so there was, it was a 12-week period that uh, was supposed to take you from whatever skill level to, to, be, to be able to get a job. So the reason that these are now currently coming up and being successful is that in the current job market, uh, employers are looking for more practical development skills over people with computer science degrees. Um, having a computer science degree is good. Having any degree is good. But it's more important, people are finding it more important that you know how to work in, a, uh, in, an, in an environment where, you know, that you've actually written code. And uh, in an environment where you've written code and worked with teams to, to create code. And a boot camp put you in a, in a place where you could do that. Like I said, it was typically a 12-week program that's on site. Um, there's a variety of languages, locations, costs, and quality levels. Um, I was doing some research in the past few weeks as I was preparing for this and finding that there's a lot of 
more options now too. I say it's typically a 12-week program. There are some places that do, you know, this was, this was a intensive on-site program. There are places that are doing part-time programs. There are places that are doing, you know, just take a, a four-week chunk and learn this specific project or language. Um, and so it's becoming a bit more flexible. But for me, it was, it was really, uh, you know, a more intense experience. Um, so there's, you know, locations. There are some in New York. There's some in San Francisco. There's some right here in Ohio. Um, and costs can range as well. And like I said, quality levels. Um, do your research. As I was trying to decide where to go, there was a lot of horror stories that I read. There were some places that were basically ripoffs, like people paid their money and showed up, and then, like, they just got abandoned after a couple days. So <laughs> be sure if you're considering doing this that you look into uh, reviews. Um, so the experience, being there when I was, you know, actually being there. Um, so the 60 plus hour weeks that, that we're warned about are really not a joke. Sorry. Um, so the six, 60 plus hour weeks are, are for real. We were there from, you know, nine to four every day. Uh, then we had work to take home with us. Um, yeah, there was, I, I didn't think that it was going to be as much work as it was, and then it ended up being probably more work than I thought it would be. So it's, it's all right. Um, the first two, those two semesters of high school computer science that I took, we covered within the first week. Um, so I, w I thought I was going to have a leg up. I was worried it was going to even maybe be a little bit slow, but that was not anything that I should have been afraid of. It went quite fast. So we talked about having a two-week rule. Uh, if you can understand what was being taught two weeks ago, you're in good shape. <laughs> so, the, and, and there was there's logic behind that. The reasoning was that if, you know, we can't stop for everyone who has a question. We can't, we've got to kind of barrel through because we've got a place we need to get to. So trust us, we're going to throw you in the deep end and you'll learn to swim eventually. So it felt like drinking from a fire hose. That was actually part of the way they described it at the start. So it really was like, here's a ton of information. Um, do with it, you know, make with it as much as you can. Work with other people around you. Try to learn from them. Uh, in that way, though, it really was a replication of what I found when I became a junior developer. There really is, I, you know, for those of you who uh, are working in the industry now, your first week was probably intense. Your first month was probably incredibly intense. You didn't know what people were talking about. So it really felt like a good preparation for that. Here's a picture of us. Looks fancy, doesn't it? Sorry. Um, so, yeah, that's the, actually the only picture I have from being there. I didn't think to take many pictures, so that's why it's not a great picture. But there's, during our final project, some people giving presentations. So, then, there's the process of actually getting a job. So now I've been through, you know, about, about 10 weeks of, uh, of the boot camp. Um, so they set us up with, with several interviews before we even left, which was really helpful. Uh, they, at the place I went to, they set us up with... Uh, people to work on getting our resume in place. Uh, they set us up with many practice interviews that ended up being actual job offers. So they had, a, they had a network that, again, the idea is to get everyone into a career in the industry. So how do we get you there? Um, for myself, again, my personal story, I had two job offers within a week of graduating the program, which was better than I expected. Um, one was a corporate job in, in Rochester where I was uh, living, uh, and the other one was a startup in Cleveland. Um, the, what I ended up, one of the, one of the things that, that I thought about and one of the things I think that's important to think about uh, when you're going into a place where you, you're going to be working is are you going to be a profit center or a cost center? Are the developers profit for the company or are they a cost to the company that can be cut as soon as they don't need you anymore? Um, I ended up taking the job in Cleveland, as you might have guessed. Uh, but the, the, the other company I found ended up, I, I saw a news piece six months later that they had massive layoffs in the place that I would have taken a job. And I'm sure I would have been right out because that was the place that I would have been there to support some other business. Um, but the company I'm working at now, uh, we are the business. So it's, what, can you, what can you do for us? You know, keep, keep that going. So junior developer status. So now I've got a job, right? I've got a job. I am gainfully employed. It's great. Uh, moving to Cleveland was fun. I uh, decided to take the startup job, as I said, and move to Ohio. Uh, the nice thing I found, you know, going in, you might ask, going in without a computer science background, you know, again, working in the lumber industry six months previous to this, 
Um, everyone else who worked there was uh, very happy to help out. You know, they knew that they, the, the software industry I've found, I've, as I've experienced it over the past year and a half, people have been very willing to take the time to teach you things. Uh, people have been very willing to, you know, spend time with you, pair with you. Um, it's, it's really a culture of learning that we have here, and I think it's excellent. And I think that's really one of the reasons why transitioning from another career into software is, can, can really go well, because you've got a lot of people here who want to help. Um, there were other people at my company who also came from some non-traditional backgrounds. Um, we have some people who you know, went to college later in life. We have some people who were changing from different careers. So it was not crazy. Most important part I found the, for my success was being willing to learn, being willing to jump in on new projects, and trying to find my own place within the team and, and where I could help. So, and I, like I said before, I felt that I was prepared well for this by the boot camp experience. I feel like when, by, by throwing us in and saying, here's some new technology, you're on a team, figure out how you guys are going to make it work, felt very realistic to what my career has felt like so far. So, but that's a good thing. I think that's, I think that's been good, and I think, uh, yeah, I think it's been really beneficial. So, and the benefit, again, of being at a startup has been that we've had plenty of real projects that have needed to get done, and there's been plenty of opportunity for um, new guys like myself to get involved and, and make a difference. So, there's a little picture from, from work. Uh, Cleveland is not always this dirty, yeah. but yeah. In, yeah. all right, well, differing opinions. Late, late winter, it is very dirty, so, ah. And uh, the, another nice benefit is on the weekend, I get to code with my friends. <laughs> and then this is one of my favorite uh, pictures of me and some of my coworkers that illustrates how fun it is to work with us. I call millennials in the workplace. <laughs> picnic, I don't know, I thought it was fun. Okay, <laughs> bottom line, uh, when, it, when it came around about a year later, everyone in our cohort ended up getting a job in the software industry. So, ended up working out well for us. Um, for myself, I was very lucky. I had the background in computer science. I had, um, I had an interest in learning. I had the ability to quit a job for three months and take this on full time. Um, yeah, I was, I was lucky. I'm not going to say I'm not. But a lot of other people have been too. There's a lot of success stories out there of people changing careers, going through boot camps. Um, and having success, ending up with, with good jobs in the industry. So to echo that again, there are risks. Um, anytime you make a major change, a major life change like this, there's a lot of risks that go into it, but rewards exist too. I'm incredibly happy now that I'm working here, uh, working, doing the job I'm doing, uh, working in the industry I'm working, and I'm glad that I didn't decide two years ago to just stick it out and work in the lumber business. I would be very unhappy now if I made that decision. Uh, and it's a great time to join the software industry. There's a lot of opportunities. There are a lot of jobs available for people who are transitioning from other jobs or don't have you know, the ideal background of a four-year computer science degree from whatever university. Uh, and the, the, the last benefit is I can still wear all the flannel I want. <laughs> However, I choose not to. That's fine. Uh, and basically, I could have skipped everything and just shown you that. Um, so, <laughs> really, I just wanted to stay cool. Just wanted to stay the cool dude. So, all right. So, some uh, some further reading. Uh, I I got into it by googling. I just started searching boot camps, and it led me down a rabbit hole. Uh, there's a couple of great sites that do reviews. If it's something you might be interested in doing, uh, and just a plug for uh, that final site. It's called The Practical Developer, and I found it to be a great learning resource for um, people at my skill level and people who are juniors coming in. Uh, it's, it's really great practical learning for, yeah, developers. So I guess we've got a little bit of time if anyone has any questions. Yeah. Mm-hmm.
so uh, in my particular circumstance, so sorry, the question was, um, how did the boot camp prepare me for actually getting into the job market? What, what steps did, did, you know, how did, how did I go from, from step boot camp to step job market? Um, they did help, we had the, the boot camp I went to had a, a hiring network of about 12 companies that they'd worked with. They'd placed people who graduated from the boot camp there uh, into these companies. And so they said, wow, that worked out pretty well. Who else you got? And so they, we had uh, kind of a speed dating round where you bring all these companies in and we would schedule these 20 minute interviews and then some people would get follow ups. Uh, and, but either it was experience or it was an actual you know, opportunity to get a job. So some people landed jobs from there. Um, for myself, uh, actually my uh, instructor ended up working at the, one of the companies and said, hey, you should also come work at this company. So networking, that's another benefit. <laughs> Um, the, the other offer I got though back in Rochester was, um, actually that was, it was, it was mostly again networking. I had a friend back there who worked and I just reached out to all my friends I knew who worked in the software industry and I said, what have you got? And he said, actually we're hiring and that's how I got in to find out about that. So they helped, but you know, reaching out on your own and reaching out to your network, that, that helps as well. Yes, yeah, um, so that's one of the guys who interviewed me and allowed me to get a job, so that's pretty great. Um, but I actually had, and this is one of the things that I wouldn't have had probably if I hadn't gone through the boot camp, is I had something published. I had something I could say, go to this website and you can see an application that I've written. And I sent it to him, I don't know if it entirely worked as, as, as well as it should have, but he was like, hey, you tried, that's pretty nice. <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, there's, there's a, you know, get something there. Get, get an app out there. Yes, sir. What were the commonalities amongst people in my cohort? Actually, you want to know what the, one of the funniest ones was? Was that I think there were three of us who were all coming from family businesses we weren't happy in. <laughs> three, three of the 15 or so of us. Um, but there was, you know, it was people who were either... Um, who, who were looking to get into the industry and either they felt like some people had gone through college and felt that it didn't prepare them enough for it. Some people were looking to get you know, into the hiring network or to get into the networking uh, part of this. So yeah, I think it was, it was people, most, most people who were just looking, who were coming from one career and going into another, but I don't know that there was a, a huge crossover in terms of background. Yes. So um, my interest in computers, uh, the question was, is that, was that a common thread? Uh, I do think so. I, there was a, so the, the one that I went to, and I think most reputable boot camps, they have a pre-screen for people. They, just, they don't just take anyone who can pay. They want to make sure that you're actually successful because they get ranked based on how many people they place into jobs eventually. So they, you, you've got to have some familiarity with it. You're not, you're not finding people who, have, who are saying, you know, Where's the any key sort of thing? You know, that's you've you've weeded those people out previously to that. Yeah. What kind of code do I write as a junior developer? <laughs> uh, I'm not going to repeat that. Um, so <laughs> no. Uh, so uh, like I said, we we were given real projects. So we work in an agile uh, environment, and they gave us. They said, "Here's the stories we've got to work on." Um, I. Here's, here's what, what looks good to you. Uh, I don't know, that this one, I guess. Okay, figure it out. And it's like, okay, well, how, someone help me. And then I'm just pulling on people's, you know, um, uh, their, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, what? Sorry? Coattail. Pulling on coat, I was thinking more of the apron strings. That's what I was going for. Um, so reaching out, yeah, trying to get help. Yes, sir. Yeah, it was, um, we, it was split into like a, a back end and then a front end course, and then the front end. So yeah, it was, it was in the end web development, but we started with Java and just had to teach people what if else statements were and, and you know, for loops and things like that. So both. Yes. Um, I'm not sure if you answered this already. Uh, what kind of hours and how much of a demanding is your, is your current work? Um, the hours I'm currently working is my boss here. Um, 
No, I mean, what we typically do, you know, about a 40-hour week. Um, it's, it was demanding. I mean, it, it is demanding because you're constantly expanding the scope of what you're working on. Um, the work that I was doing my first month would not be as demanding now. Um, but if you are successful at doing your work, you're going to get more. So it continues to be demanding. Yes, sir. Yes. It is not linear in the amount of work that you have to do in the 12 week. Still horrible amounts of work. However, in the 26 week, because you actually have a job and you're still expecting to do something on your job and you can go to school at night, you expect to be productive at night, and then you do homework somewhere in the middle of all of that time, I would say that it's good, it's a wonderful option to have. However, be advised. <laughs> <laughs> but it's an excellent opportunity. Yep. Just, a, just a thought, I don't, because it's not something that everyone necessarily thinks about. Yes. If you have a job, it is an option. However, yes. work-life balance is a challenge. Absolutely. Yeah, I think we've got to, yeah, I've got to cut it off. Okay. So, sorry, I'm happy to answer any other questions anyone has, but we do have to cut off so we can move on. So thank you all for listening. I really appreciate your time. Thank you.